Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and this quick tip tutorial is going to show you how to use Spryder's animated art packs with Spryder. If you've purchased one of our art packs from our own online store, you can retrieve it by clicking on the My Purchases tab, and then you'll see a thumbnail for each of the products you purchased. And for example, here we have the basic platformer pack. If you purchase that, you'll see something like this. You just click the Manage button over here and then you can download your zip file. Once it's done downloading, you just unzip it and that will be the, uh, the folder with all of the uh, Spryder projects inside. And if you've purchased your Spryder art packs on Steam, then they would be located in the actual Steam installation folder. So in my case, it's uh, local drive C, program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, Spryder, art packs and that's where you're going to find each of the uh, if you've purchased a full art pack they would be here and then there's the essentials folder which are the free versions uh, with reduced content of each of the art packs as well and if you've purchased Spryder Pro or any of our art packs on the Scara store at Scara.com then when you're logged in and you go to the store tab you'll see down here there will be a your downloads section and if you just click that, you'll see the products that you've purchased. And uh, if you click download, then there will be the links for that particular product. And in this case, since it was Spryder Pro that was purchased, there's the downloads for not only Spryder Pro, but also each of the free Essentials versions of the art pack. Again, the Essentials versions of the art packs have less content, but they are free with the purchase of Spryder Pro. So that's where you would download them from. They would just be zip files and you could unzip them wherever you would like. Animated art packs are folders that contain Spryder projects, which are themselves folders that contain Spryder files and all of the images that that particular Spryder file uses to create the animations that we've pre-created for you. So just as an example, we can open this Robo Spider Spryder file and you can see we have a fully rigged giant robot spider that has several animations such as an attack coming down from the ceiling getting hit standing at idle and this is a transition from the coming down from above to the idle position and then there's dying and walking and of course, once you've found something in one of the art packs that you want to use in one of your games, you can tweak any of the animations by going to any of the keyframes or creating new keyframes and changing positions with the uh, bones. Or you can create entirely new animations by clicking here. And then we can, we'll just name this example. And then you can actually pick from anywhere in any of the timelines, you can pick um, the position of the uh, character and press Control and Shift and C to copy and then go into your new empty animation make sure at the beginning of the timeline at zero and press Control V to paste and that'll give you that already all set rigged um, frame to start your animation off at then you can just drag along in the timeline and adjust your position of things as needed Oops. There we go. And you can see how that works. And of course, you could customize things much more drastically by going into graphics programs and changing the actual images that are used to animate your character. So for example, we'll take this head here and load it into Krita, which is a free graphics program that I highly recommend. You can get it from krita.org. And let's just say we want things to be a lot more cartoony here. There we go, and we'll just save that. Then when we go back into Spryder and click this to refresh the images, you'll see we now have the new cartoony face with the eyebrows. If you're using any of the free and open source Spryder APIs or runtimes that are available, you could use the Spryder animation files directly in your game engine.
And if you are going to be using the Sprite or data files directly in your game engine, then you might be able to put use to the video game data specific features that Spriter offers, such as creating hitboxes right in your animation. So let's say, for example, in this attack animation, we want an actual hitbox for the attack to appear and persist during the duration of the attack animation. So we'll say starting at this keyframe here. So I go to this keyframe and instead of by default the alt plus click option is set to create bone we're changing it to create box and I will just uh, make sure no bone is selected by clicking somewhere blank in the canvas because uh, if you have a bone selected and then create something then that thing will automatically be a child of that bone and we don't want that in this case so I'm just going to hold alt and left click and drag to put the hitbox where I want it to and then you'll see automatically that box appears at that keyframe when you need it and it doesn't exist until it's needed and then the, when it hits the new keyframe it automatically disappears and if you want it to persist longer than that then the way you do that is you just left click it to select it press control C to copy and then you can go to the next keyframe and paste it in so now we have the hit box and the hitbox can even be animated from keyframe to keyframe. So let's say we want it to start out smaller, like so at first, but then to actually tween and, and get bigger during the attack animation. So as you can see, you can have very, very strong control of how the actual uh, enemy is going to behave or affect things like the player in the actual game. And once all of your animations are ready to use inside your own game, whether you're going to be using the actual Spriter files or you're going to export uh, sequential images or sprite sheets out of Spriter and then use those as typical sprites in your game, uh, in either case, you're going to want to make sure that you're not creating uh, animation at assets that are needlessly large. The art packs come at a quite a high resolution, very large images, which typically will be bigger than you actually need in your game. And don't just export them out as at this size if it's too big for your game, because that'll be very wasteful. What you want to do is actually scale down your project if you're going to use the actual Spriter data, or just when you're exporting, scale, uh, choose a different smaller scale while you're exporting. And I'll link to tutorials for how to do that. Um, but uh, the, you can actually, with Spriter, create an entire scaled clone of the entire project once it's ready for your game. Uh, and what I suggest you do is actually work at the original size um, and just always export out a scaled version when you're ready to import it into your game because especially if you're going to be um, changing actual images and graphics program you can work a lot quicker and sloppier at overly large images and then when they reduce they sort of clean up automatically um, so anyway once you're done with your otherwise done with your animations you would just going to file and then other file actions, and then save as resized palette swapped project and images. And if you select that, you would then uh, be prompted to, uh, to choose a, uh, a folder, and you'd be saving this out into an entirely new folder that you would create. Uh, and it's gonna create a, a scaled down clone of the Spriter file and every last image that the Spriter file needs also scaled down to the new, new size. I should also point out that if you are going to be making changes to additions and, and scaling um, any of the art packs or portions of the art packs, it's a really good idea to make sure you always have an original unaltered backup of your art packs to fall back on if needed or to start new projects with. Uh, and yeah, basically save what you're doing a lot, back it up frequently, and always have an original backup that you can always go back to. And that's about it for this tutorial. I hope I've done a decent job covering the basics of what art packs are and what you can do with them uh, in Spriter and for your games. Um, and I will be linking to other tutorials that I've previously made that go deeper into actually using Spriter to customize animations, to customize the artwork, and, uh, and things like that. So uh, that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching.